This video will give you an overview of SoundWhale for iOS. When you open the application, you'll see this screen after you've logged in. This is the main interface page, and it can be found by pressing the Play tab in the navigation bar. It contains all of the audio and video functions in SoundWhale. This is where you set your audio input. And please note that if you have an audio interface plugged in, all of those input channels will show up here as well. The speaker symbol is if you want to monitor the signal that's being sent to the input. To deactivate or activate the input channel, click the switch. You can also open audio files by activating this channel and pasting a link here. This has to be a direct link to a file. This is a great way to play along or practice with a backing track. Just select your instrument from the input, play the file, and record your idea. Additionally, you can use a software instrument as your input source via AudioBus. Make sure SoundWhale is launched first. Then, open AudioBus. Choose your input application or device and choose SoundWhale as your output. Then, go back to SoundWhale and you'll see AudioBus as the input. I have a MIDI keyboard plugged in so I can start playing. At the top of the screen, you have the video section. The first page turns the camera on in case you want to record video from the camera with your audio. The second page is dedicated to the video chat, but you'll see this only when you're connected with another user. The third page is to open a video file. You should use a direct link to a file here. Once the video file is open, you can play along with it. This is great for creating sound to picture. You can use the audio from your microphone, audio interface, audio file, or as in this case, your software instrument. I've said my goodbyes, I've packed my bag, so just put this as your... To remove the video, just shake the device. When using a video source like the camera or video file, when you engage the record button, SoundWhale will make a screen recording. Hold the video in landscape mode and then record if you want to record the video without seeing the controls. Using the video file feature is a great way to capture your ideas for a post-production project. Note that recording a video from a file can only start when it's in the pause position. Lastly, on the interface, there is a notepad where you can jot down your ideas. As you can see, even working alone can be extremely useful in SoundWhale for iOS. So the moment you get a new idea, you can actually record it within seconds. The intention here is not to create finalized audio, but something fast yet high quality that you can share with your bandmates or clients when creating ideas. Now. Let's go through the rest of the navigation tabs. The next tab is the Connect tab. It's where you manage your contacts. You can add them, delete them, and connect with them for a session. Connecting is easy. Press the Connect button next to the contact that you want to call, decide whether or not you want to include a video chat in the call, and then press Connect. The tab after this is the Chat or Messages tab. This is where you can type a message to any of your contacts, including group chats as well. Messages can be sent to contacts at any time, and you don't have to be connected with them in a session. The last tab is the Profile tab. You can change your photo, location, or username here. After you type something, make sure to press the Send or Enter button, or it won't get saved. This section also contains the recorded files that are saved on your device. It is recommended that you use wired headphones during a session. 
This is to eliminate any feedback when using a microphone from the input channel. You can, of course, use a microphone from the video chat, which has echo cancellation, or the session chat, which is a text chat that's located under the audio controls. Bluetooth headphones are not recommended. If you must use Bluetooth headphones, please refer to the manual. First, we'll connect a simple audio session. You'll know you're connected when you see a new track called Incoming Stream and a messaging area called the Session Chat. Once we connect, the input and audio file tracks are now automatically streamed to your contact that you're connected to. Any audio that your contact is sending you is received in the incoming stream track. Turning this on allows you to hear the stream that they're sending you. It also converts your outgoing stream to the correct sample rate, so it's very important that you turn this on, otherwise your contact may not hear you. Connecting any iOS-compatible audio interface will also appear at the input so you can plug in your instrument and stream high-quality audio as well. You can adjust the levels of the audio tracks and record your result. You also have a new chat area called the Session Chat. This is a dedicated chat for the connected session. The messages get saved with your other messages and have the letters SC with the contact's name. You can swipe between the session chat and the notepad as needed. Now we'll connect with a video chat. The camera defaults to the off position, so if you want to use it, you'll have to turn it on by touching the screen hey, dude. and pressing the camera button. Hey man, how are you? Good, so do you have that track you wanted to play me? Yeah, check this out. Aside from this dedicated area for the chat, all of the other controls are the same. Cool, I like it. Uh, play from the beginning one more time, I want to record it. We can press the record button to record the audio that we are sending or receiving. For better quality audio and better performance, it's best to leave the camera off for this type of call if you're just using the microphone. Cool. Thanks, man. Got it. All right. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Next, let's connect with our contact and stream audio from a software instrument using AudioBus. For this example, we'll connect without video chat. But if you want to stream AudioBus with video chat, then refer to the manual as the setup is a little different. First, Make sure that sound wheel is open. Then, open audio bus. Select your hardware or software instrument as the input and sound wheel as the output. Then, go to your instrument and make sure that you can hear sound. Now, we'll connect. After we connect, you'll need to turn on your audio bus input as well as your incoming stream, which automatically corrects any sample rate issues. Now, we can go to our software instrument and play some notes. Our contact on the desktop application is now receiving signal from iOS. Note that SoundWhale for iOS doesn't stream video files. However, if you want to review a live mix that's synchronized to video, then the desktop version can initiate the call and stream it to iOS. See the instructional video on post-production for more detail. Keep in mind that the audio controls don't work during a video stream. So what do we do now? 